Music also plays an integral part in any Orthodox service, assisting in the sacred transformation of the space. In most cases, nearly the entire service is made up of both chanting and singing. Many hymns, like the church itself, are well over a thousand years old. Byzantine chant, for instance, goes back almost to the beginning of the early church. Well, some of the hymns go back to the first or second century of the church. Mm -hmm. The same hymns, actually, that you would hear in Russia, too, but different settings to those hymns. In Russia, they, uh, you heard me mention Peter the Great earlier in his reforms. He introduced four-part singing into the church, where, uh -huh. where traditionally in a, in a Greek or a Middle Eastern Orthodox church, everything's sung a cappella, as it is in the Russian church, but in, in one, one voice and chant. Now, in, in some of the Western countries, like even in many of our Antiochian churches here, we have four-part choirs. We kind of incorporated traditions from, from the Slavic churches and our churches, and there's kind of a mixture in many of our churches. As always, evolution is at the heart of tradition, and the music of Orthodoxy has continued to change and integrate additional elements from its founding up until today. And I know most of the music here is probably influenced from the Russian church, but do you know if that was also influenced uh, by hymns that came from Greece or the Middle East um, that still find their way into this tradition, or is it mainly Russian music? Oh, no. No, all of it is uh, goes back to, harkens back to early Christianity, but it harkens back to the to the ancient Roman melodies, the Dorian, and the, there was different different Roman melodies that became the basis for uh, what we later called Byzantine chant. Mm -hmm. But really, the word is Roman. The patriarch of Constantinople is the Roman patriarch, by the way, huh. not the Byzantine patriarch. The last vestige of the Roman Empire is the patriarchate of, of Constantinople. That's all that's left from the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it goes back to then. And the service is all sung, so it's kind of like this constant fluid movement of you know priest and choir it isn't it's not broken up and the problem with that sometimes too is that it's hard to understand like i get a lot of people here who have never been to orthodox church before and there was a guy here just on sunday and i said i said he's oh this was amazing I'm like, good i'm glad you liked it i said do you understand it and he's like well i understood the sermon i'm like oh, what about the rest of it he's like yeah i kind of caught things but what language was that i'm like english <laughs> but the thing is when you sing things when you're singing and you're chanting it's like pop songs if you got a pop song in your head you've been singing the wrong words to for your whole life yeah yeah right? well it's the same thing with church <laughs> it can you know? be a little less like you're clear. hearing things that maybe you know so we do have you know we'll provide us some uh, script a libretto for the yeah. liturgy so people know that oh this is praise the lord oh my okay yeah it's in english but the core function of the music, to use sound as a means for worship, and to express the understanding of the faith through music, remains the same. Traditionally, you would only hear monophonic chant in, in, in a Greek church or a, an Antiochian church. Uh, and that, it's very beautiful and it's very soul-filling. And the words have meanings. For us, you cannot just sing anything in the church. The, the, the hymns are theology. They express our theology. And that's how people learn about what the church believes. You can listen to these hymns and you begin to get a feel for really what we believe about who Jesus Christ is or who what we believe about the Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, or the saints, or whatever. The music you will hear varies quite a lot because liturgical music continued to evolve based on the time and place. So there is a wide spectrum from early Byzantine style to Tchaikovsky, who wrote some liturgical music himself. There's nothing that isn't sung at all uh, or chanted in the church. Mm -hmm. um, some, sometimes they'll do the Our Father or the Creed, um, in yeah, but isn't that kind of a word. killjoy? Our father. Our I, yeah, I, I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, what, what? No, no, we don't, we, we don't do that. Yeah, I, I will say I don't like it as much. It, um, it's, it's, uh, in it's OCA jarring. churches, I find that it, it's sung. There's music for the Our Father and there's music for right. the Creed. Oh. 
While Father Christopher's statement is true in the case of the OCA, you will hear certain parts of the service, such as the Creed and the Our Father, being spoken by the congregation if you go to a Greek or Antiochian church. The amount of music as well as the presence of musical instruments varies as well. In more Slavic traditions, everything is sung a cappella and using an organ would be seen as too Western. The Greeks and Antiochians, however, will sometimes incorporate the organ into their music. The Coptics are also not opposed to instruments, but they're still selective in the ones that they use. So you name the instrument, we are not playing it in the Coptic <laughs> Orthodox Church. Um, we are uh, limited uh, solely to the triangle and to the cymbals. Um, and those are just mainly um, used for tempo. Um, it's a very basic rhythm. Um, there isn't really much um, to it. Uh, no drums, no guitars, no saxophones, um, <laughs> you know, nothing that is really, um, for lack of a better word, Western, but also more modern in the sense. Whether it's sung, chanted, or accompanied with instruments, Orthodox liturgical music is probably the most accessible library of church theology. The colorful and detailed hymnography confesses what Orthodox Christians believe, as well as tells the stories the church is based on and brings the characters of the saints to life. You look at the hymnology and the hymnography of the Coptic Orthodox Church, um, and you also see the depth of theology within it. Um, the basis behind every hymn within the Coptic Orthodox Church comes from a deep history, and it comes from a deep theology. Um, you learn everything in those hymns. Um, you can find a illiterate uh, woman within the Coptic Orthodox Church who can talk to you about monophysitism and miaphysitism. Um, you can find uh, a child who will speak to you about the birth of Christ um, at the manger. 